And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Abrasaurus, which was a request from Tyrant King via our Patreon and Discord. So thanks. It was a Macronarian sauropod that lived in the Middle Jurassic in what is now Sichuan Province, China, in the lower Shashi Miao Formation. It probably looked like other sauropods, but maybe a bit more stout. That's according to paleo art I saw. It had a long neck, a long tail, walked on four legs. And the reason I say it probably looked like other sauropods is because only the skull has been described. Hmm. It did, however, have a more boxy head with a tall bony arch on top in front of the eyes where the nostrils were. It's estimated to be about 30 feet or 9.1 meters long. <laughs> Based on a skull. <laughs> yeah. And the type species is Abrasaurus dongpoi. The genus name means delicate lizard. And that refers to the skull that had large openings separated by thin bones. The species name is in honor of the poet Su Shi, a.k.a. Su Dongpo, who was born in Sichuan and lived from 1037 to 1101. So a little while ago. <laughs> yeah. Not, not as long ago as Abrasaurus, though. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, too. <laughs> <laughs> a thousand years sounds like a long time until you think in geology terms and then it's basically right now. Yeah. <laughs> The fossils were discovered in 1984 and then first described in 1986. And they were described by Ouyang Hui as Abrasaurus gigantorhinus. Did it have a big nose? <laughs> well, we don't know. Well, that's what gigantorhinus oh, I guess, would mean. <laughs> I guess it had the large opening. The boxy head, I guess you could say, like the boxiness of the front is sort of like a big nose. Yeah. He described this in his thesis, but the thesis didn't meet ICZN standards, so that name is a nomum nudum. Then Hui, in 1989, formally described Abrasaurus and named it Abrasaurus dongpoensis. Oh, it's interesting. He changed the species name. Yes. He changed his mind in the meantime. Well, the species name changed again because ensis is only used to refer to localities, <sighs> so they used the I or the E suffix instead to refer to a male individual, and that's how we got Abrasaurus dongpoi. Which looks a little bit funny reading it as an English speaker because it looks like dongpoi, because mm -hmm. the O and I sort of are combined. That's where you have to know how these Latin suffixes work. Mm-hmm. The holotypes, a nearly complete, well-preserved skull. A fragmentary skull and skeleton have also been found, but hasn't been described. Oh, so I guess you can kind of guess then how it looks from that. It had a lightly built skull that was considered to be, quote, delicate and graceful. Hui described Abrasaurus as a, quote, moderate-sized sauropod with a delicately constructed skull. He also said it had extremely large fenestra in the skull the holes, the openings, and the skull was relatively low and elongated. The openings in the skull are similar to Camarasaurus, but the skull of Camarasaurus is more robust. Abrasaurus had these narrow, elongated nasals that were about one-third the length of the skull. Yeah, big nose. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> he also had a lot of teeth that were spoon-shaped. Originally, Abrasaurus was described as a Camarasaurid, but that may not actually be the case. Some later research found it to be a basal member of Macronaria, like Camarasaurus, but we still need more research, such as the description of the second specimen, to be more certain. Yeah, it's nice they have a second one. That's really helpful. Mm -hmm. Especially, like you said, for knowing the length. Yeah. Abrasaurus is housed at the Tsugong Dinosaur Museum, and other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place included stegosaurs, such as Bashanosaurus, and Huayengasaurus, sauropods such as Shunosaurus, and Omeisaurus, and theropods such as Lashansaurus, and Yangchuanosaurus, and other animals that lived around the same time and place included crocodiliforms, pterosaurs, and turtles. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left.